Many Chinese people thought the Three Gorges Dam would bring their hydro fee down when completed. But things are going the other way. They don't know they have been paying for the project and still are. The first round of virus mass testing has just finished. The second round has already started. That was the testing fee is a million dollar business for the government. A nearly $50,000 monthly salary paid in cash. This is the kind of inconvenience that the head of Hong Kong is facing since being sanctioned by the U.S. for limiting freedoms in the region. Amidst allegations of voter fraud, a Dominion tech worker is found to have worked for a firm linked to the Chinese military. And China breaks a record for the highest trade tariffs imposed on a country. That's 210 percent on Australian wine imports. Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. The quality of the Three Gorges Dam at the Yangtze River attracted attention this summer during severe flood. Now, another function of the dam is raising questions, and Chinese people don't even know anything about it. The Chinese Communist regime has been using one of the world's biggest dams, the Three Gorges Dam, as the authorities' ATM. They quietly collect huge sums of money from Chinese people in the name of the project, which is absolutely contrary to the promise they made. This is according to Wang Weiluo, a Chinese hydrologist from Germany. Wang had an exclusive interview with U.S.-based media Sound of Hope on this topic. The authorities used the name of the Three Gorges project to collect hundreds of billions from people and are still collecting. Many people don't know about it. They only know that the Three Gorges project is the world's largest. So many were in favor of the project when it was initiated, because they can make money from it and get promoted from it. He points out that the CCP authority has been collecting a special tax entitled Three Gorges Project Construction Fund since 1992. And they later changed its name to National Major Water Conservancy Project Construction Fund in 2010 and continued collecting for another decade. The Three Gorges Fund is not overtly collected. It's collected covertly so that many people don't realize they pay such a tax. They make it part of the hydro fee. That's to say, the central government put the burden back onto the shoulders of the Chinese people. Last year, an extension of the special tax was approved by the Chinese State Council, and the tax will be extended to 2025. According to data available online until 2014, the Three Gorges project has been collecting over $76 billion from Chinese individuals and enterprises. This is absolutely against the promise made by then Vice Premier Zhou Jiahua. In Zhou's 1992 report to National People's Congress, the project was expected to be self sustainable from 2003 due to its power generation capacity. But on a closer look at the audit of the Three Gorges project by the National Audit Office, Wang was shocked. He found the National Audit Office made no mention of the power generation revenues of the Three Gorges project in its report. He questions where the huge amount of revenue money goes. Here's what he says in the Sound of Hope interview. Zhou Jianghua said that the project shouldn't use Chinese people's money from 2003, do you remember? He said it would have funding from hydro fees, but they didn't count the hydro fees as their income. They didn't include this part. All they did is collected the special tax and ignored the hydro income. Wang called the Three Gorges Project Construction Fund a genuine ATM because the authority neither pays interest nor will pay the funds back. Wang said the authorities should stop the special tax immediately and pay the Chinese people back all of the money collected. Reporting by Xu Wenhui, NTD News. Now we look to the CCP virus situation in China. Authorities in Tianjin City say everything is under control. But reports are coming in from locals who say they've seen things the media isn't publicizing. A viral video that's circulating online suggests the situation in the city may be worse than authorities are letting on. The woman who filmed the clip said all quarantined people in the Tanggu district have been transferred to the Haipen People's Hospital, adding that there were already 50 or 60 vehicles this morning and they are still coming. She advised people not to go to that hospital, calling it scary and noting that a number of police officers are on guard. Earlier this month, mass virus testing was done in some of the city's districts. Official results claim that not one of them came back positive. But the unusually positive results have locals questioning why there are still so many ambulances lining up outside hospitals. 
And in another city called Manzhou Li, two hospitals were suspended earlier this week. That's after the city was put under lockdown a week ago. Local authorities say they've tested 200,000 people this week. Of them, they say only 12 were found to be infected. The city is located in China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. According to the area's Medical Insurance Bureau, a virus test costs 16 U.S. dollars, a relatively high price for the region's population. Meaning for the first round of mass testing, citizens have paid over $3 million in testing fees. A second round of mass testing began on Friday. Now we turn to Hong Kong. Beijing is taking more action in Hong Kong to limit the freedoms of this international financial hub. NTD's business reporter Paul Graney talked to a Hong Kong businessman about the situation. Well, fortunately, after the National Security Bureau has had objective on the July 1st, when it was coming, I knew it was it, they want Hong Kong to be the same as uh, mainland China. China's draconian law abolished Hong Kong's freedoms, stifled the pro-democracy protests, and brought Hong Kong under Beijing's full control. UN says within two years, Hong Kong will be exactly the same as the mainland city of Shanghai. And Yuan warned that it's not just Hong Kong that's succumbing to the CCP's influence. He sees China's growing influence over American society and even its mainstream media. State-run China Daily is still paying millions each year to run propaganda in publications like the Wall Street Journal and the LA Times. So what I saw was really, it really shocked me that how well the CCP have done in changing the world, in controlling the world. And the financial world may be the same. Money has flowed from Wall Street to China for decades. Even this year after the China tried to cover up the CCP virus, money continued to flow there. In an interview with Hong Kong's International Business Channel, the city's chief executive, Carrie Lam, admitted that she now faces certain inconveniences. That's due to the sanctions imposed by the U.S. after she backed Beijing's draconian national security law on the city. I'm using cash every day for all the things. I have piles of cash at home because uh, the government is paying me cash for my salary because I don't have a bank account. Based on the U.S. sanctions, any bank that does business with Lamb would face punishment. That's even including transactions like opening a bank account. Lam brings in an annual salary of about 570,000 U.S. dollars. One of Dominion Voting System's key tech employees has been found to have worked for a firm backed by the Chinese military. That's as the company remains in the hot seat of voter fraud allegations. NTD's Juliet Song has the details. A key person behind the Dominion Voting System has an unexpected former employer a Chinese company that's accused of endangering U.S. national security. That's according to a report from political news outlet The National Pulse. The report comes as Dominion remains at the center of election controversy. The company is facing allegations of rigging election results. In a Twitter post, President Trump quoted a report claiming Dominion deleted 2.7 million Trump votes nationwide. The company denies these claims. Dominion is one of the largest voting machine providers in the U.S. More than 30 states use its software, including those with razor-thin margins, like Georgia and Arizona. The employee in question is named Andy Huang. His LinkedIn profile shows he holds an important role, manager of IT core infrastructure. The title suggests he's familiar with the chief infrastructure of the algorithms behind Dominion's software. Back in early 2000, Huang worked for China Telecom, a company that the Department of Defense says is owned or controlled by the Chinese military. And this April, federal agencies, including Homeland Security, called for banning China Telecom, citing national security risks. Huang has since removed records of his employment at both Dominion and China Telecom from his LinkedIn profile. Juliet Song, NTD News. 
The U.S. is set to restrict about 90 more Chinese aerospace and other companies from buying U.S. goods and technology. It's due to their ties with China's military. This, according to a Reuters exclusive report. The draft copy of the list seen by Reuters says U.S. suppliers must seek licenses to sell commercially available items to the Chinese companies. The report says Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China Limited, or COMAC, is on the list. It's believed to be spearheading Chinese efforts to compete with Boeing and Airbus in large aircraft production. But a professor in business at the University of South Carolina Aiken, Frank Xie, says without U.S. technology, COMAC's large aircraft project is at risk. We know most of the critical parts of COMAC's C919 plane, from the engine to the electronic equipment to some navigation to the most critical equipment, are actually made from American and European companies. The U.S. sanction now means China's large aircraft project will be discontinued immediately. Earlier this month, U.S. President Trump signed an executive order prohibiting U.S. investors from investing in companies owned or controlled by the Chinese military. The regulations will take effect in January and may affect 31 Chinese companies, including China Telecom, China Mobile, and Hikvision. The U.S. Department of Defense identified these companies as being supported by the Chinese military. China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs opposed the move and claimed Chinese companies have always adhered to operating in accordance with laws and regulations. But the so-called military-civilian integration policy that the Communist Party has been advocating triggers concern. That is, under government demands, technologies of civilian enterprises could all be converted to military use. In fact, the U.S. government is actually doing what it has always done. The Trump administration is doing what should be done and continues to suppress the CCP. In the end, the U.S. must actually block all avenues that may be used by the CCP to steal technology, including military and civilian, dual-use technologies, and civilian companies used for military development. Frank Shia said all these avenues must be blocked one by one. Reporting by Grace Wong, NTD News. Now we turn to Venezuela. The South American country has resumed its direct shipments of oil to China. That's despite U.S. sanctions that were put in place to prevent the exchange. Washington extended its sanctions on a Venezuelan state firm to also include any companies that trade with it. The sanctions came as part of a push by the Trump administration to oust Venezuelan leader Nicolas Maduro. But the move failed to completely loosen Maduro's power, nor did it stop the country's oil shipments to China. Venezuela has now ramped up its oil shipments to Malaysia, where transfers of cargo between vessels at sea have allowed most of Venezuela's crude to continue flowing to China after changing hands and using trade intermediaries. Trade tensions between China and Australia reach a new high. This as China slaps a whopping 200 percent import tariff on Australia. Now to NTD's Don Ma for the story. Beijing's Ministry of Commerce will impose an over 200 percent tariff on some Australian wine imports. It's a preliminary measure amidst a so-called anti-dumping investigation into Australian imports. Dumping refers to when a company exports a product that's below fair market price. Anti-dumping tariffs may be imposed to protect the country's home economy. China's ministry announced on Friday that so-called preliminary rulings found there has been substantial dumping of wine from Australia into the Chinese market. The tariffs will amount to 110 to 210 percent. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison immediately dismissed the allegations. He said there is no basis against the claims made against the Australian wine industry or subsidies. Morrison also added that Australian wines had some of the highest average price points in China during the first half of 2020. Australian wine Penfolds is highly regarded by Chinese consumers. It's so popular that copycat brand called Ben Ford's was created to compete with it. China accounts for nearly 40 percent of Australia's wine exports and is its largest market. Simon Birmingham, Australian trade minister, says the imposition may be a retaliation measure by the Chinese regime. The cumulative impact of China's trade sanctions against a number of Australian industries during the course of this year does give rise to the perception that these actions are being undertaken as a result or in response to some other factors. 
Earlier this year, Australia called for an investigation into the origins of the CCP virus in China. Since then, China has restricted critical Australian imports. That's including beef, barley, seafood, sugar and timber. Beijing has also expressed frustration with Australia for blocking equipment made by Chinese telecom giant Huawei from its networks. In addition to the 200% tariffs, China is also holding over $700 million worth of Australian coal exports off its coast. The resources have been anchored there for months. This is over apparent issues with environmental standards. According to Bloomberg, around 50 vessels filled with coal are waiting at Chinese ports. Chinese inspections are reportedly preventing it from coming ashore. China is Australia's largest two-way trading partner. Two-way trade reached a record $250 billion in 2019. Significant Australian exports include iron ore, barley and beef. China buys over 80 percent of the ore and around 70 percent of the barley. China is also Australia's number one market for beef, totaling about 25 percent of Australia's total beef exports. Senior Trump administration officials say the White House is pushing forward with even more tough measures against Beijing. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. Among them, the most significant move will be the creation of an informal alliance of Western nations. When Beijing uses its trading power to bully other nations, the group would act together to retaliate. For example, when China blocks certain imports, the alliance would instead purchase the goods. The group could also decide to lay tariffs on China for compensation. One senior official told the Wall Street Journal China is trying to beat countries into submission with economic coercion, adding that the West needs to create a system to collectively absorb the economic punishment from China's coercive diplomacy and offset the cost. Officials say China's economic retaliation toward Australia inspired the idea. That's after the country pushed for an investigation into the origins of the CCP virus. According to a member of South Korea's Parliamentary Intelligence Committee, South Korea stopped North Korea from hacking into South Korean companies' databases, notably those that are working to develop CCP virus vaccines. Committee member Ha Tai Kwang said on Friday the National Intelligence Service confirmed no damage was done by the hacking attempt. The discovery came after Microsoft said early this month that Russian and North Korean hackers have tried to break into networks in Canada, France, India, South Korea and the United States. Ha and another lawmaker said North Korean leader Kim Jong-un had taken unreasonable actions due to paranoia over virus spread. They said those actions included banning fishing and salt production over fears that seawater might have been contaminated with the virus. And that's all for today's China Info Kiss. Thanks for watching and see you next time.